Hello everyone. So, last time we talked, there were a lot of questions about how we figure out whether an object is positively charged or negatively charged. The answer to that is by using the electrostatic series. The electrostatic series is basically a list of materials that tells us what charge it would be if it was well, rubbed against another object. So, for example, if we took rabbit fur and ebonite and rubbed them together, one of these would become positive and one would become negative. We know that because when we apply friction to two objects, this allows the electrons to jump. So then we need to look at the order that it appears in our list. So over here at the top, our items have a weaker tendency to gain electrons. So if we have a weak tendency to gain electrons, that means they're probably not going to hang on to their electrons. Over here, we have a strong tendency to gain electrons. So if we're gaining electrons, that means the bottom is usually negative and the top is usually positive. So what I've done is just write down that these down here become negative because they gain electron and these up here become positive because they lose an electron and that electron of course goes this way. It goes to the object that's below. Here's an example down here. We have hair and ebonite. So hair, the charge on hair, hair's up here, and ebonite is down here. Because hair is at the top or above ebonite, then we know that it's going to become positive. So hair is going to become positive, and ebonite is at the bottom. It's going to gain electrons, so it's going to be negative. So I've written over here that hair loses electrons and becomes positive, and that ebonite gains the electrons and becomes negative. And so that's, of course, after we apply friction. So I've rubbed an ebonite rod on my hair, and so we end up with these charges. Let's try another example. We have rabbit fur and a balloon. If we check out rabbit fur, it's right here. And if we compare it to a balloon, balloon's down here. So the rabbit fur is on top, which means it's going to become positive. And the balloon is below it, so it's going to become negative. So that's the charge of the rabbit fur and balloon. And this is basically how you use the electrostatic series. Anything on top will be more likely to give or lose an electron. And anything on the bottom will be more likely to gain or accept the electrons. So there's two ways that we try to figure out where electrons are moving. When we're talking about friction, we pretty much always refer to our electrostatic series. But sometimes we're talking about something that's called induction or conduction. We'll talk about that a bit more in our next lesson. But when we're talking about conduction or induction, we no longer use the electrostatic series. Instead, we have to think logically about where the electrons want to go. Remember, these electrons are following the laws of electric charges. These laws state that like charges repel, dislike charges attract, and neutral and charged objects will also attract. So, electrons will have a tendency to spread out as much as possible because like charges repel. So if we have a whole bunch of electrons in a sort of a confined space, eventually they're going to spread out so that they're not all bunched up close to each other. So this is when we're talking about induction and conduction. So 
the electrons will flow in the direction that reduces the charge. They spread out as much as possible because this allows the object to become less unstable or more stable. So to learn more about conduction and induction, watch my next lesson.